Okay, hello. This is uh, a tutorial on how to make these uh, full face labels for a mini disc. You can see some of the ones I've done here. Uh, this is one I've done like this. Now, these are the full, the whole mini disc is a label. And I think these look nice. I mean, uh, most common kind of disc is this one here, where uh, other people have done these sorts of labels where. Um, you know, you got the disc and you just got this rectangle. So all, a disc is, you know, rectangle, 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 rectangle. And I think my opinion is that this is a boring design. I mean, if you want everything identical like this, you might as well get an Apple product. You know, all all iPhones look the same, right? There's no creativity involved. So I think with mini disc you can be more creative. I mean, especially in things like this, right? People take a square the square label and then they tend to squeeze them to make a rectangle so these the people end up thin looking thin and skinny like this I don't know I mean to me anyway my opinion okay is that hey why not be more creative this is mini disc after all it's not an Apple product so okay fine so uh, to make a lit disc like this I'll, I'll just show you what to do uh, again this is not my uh, you know, I'm not taking credit for this. I mean, I got my ideas from other people, right? So I'm just putting this all in video because someone asked me to. Uh, what you need mostly is over here. The main things you're going to need: some paper. Uh, this now, there's three kinds of paper you can use. Basically, this is the entire page is a sticker. Okay, so you can get this at any hobby hobby shop. Of course, I. Um, if you're living in North America, this will be 8.5 by 11. I don't live in North America, so this is A4 size. But uh, anyway, they're basically the same. There's three kinds of paper. There's uh, glossy paper, there's matte paper, which is basically just feels like paper. And then there's transparent paper. Um, now, I'm using matte paper, and I'll show you why later. Uh, because everything that I do with this method will end up looking glossy. So there's no point in using glossy paper anyway. Transparent paper looks really good for certain things, but it's harder to work with, so I'll just do this stuff today. And of course you need your inkjet printer, okay? Any printer's fine. Uh, I recommend you get, okay, so of course you need your mini disc. Uh, you need a packing tape, and you need packing tape that's the size of a mini disc. This, it has to be a bit bigger than the disc itself, okay? So the width here of the tape the width here of that tape has to be wider than the size of the mini disc. So you have to get a, a big enough piece of tape that you can roll over the whole disc. All right. Uh, you need some a cutter and some scissors. And again, I wouldn't settle for just ordinary uh, cutter and scissors. These scissors I bought from a hobby shop. They're very sharp. If you were to touch this, you'd get like a paper cut. Okay, I'm not going to demonstrate that, but uh, I, I've done it before. Okay. And uh, these scissors are, uh, yeah, they were more expensive, but they make a much more accurate cut, okay, than regular scissors. And the same thing with this knife. I bought this as a hob at a hobby shop. This is not just a regular carpet knife, even though it looks the same, but it's quite sharp. You touch it and, you know, you'll get a cut. And of course, you need to know what disc you're going to do. Oh, I'm going to do this one disc today is Archangels, okay. Um, any disc you want to do is fine. So basically, you're going to match. You want to match up the disc with the color. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, basically I chose this disc because I think the gold here will match up with the gold in here. It'll be pretty nice. Uh, I should note that I tend to leave this area here um, under the uh, under where the shutter opens. I tend to leave this without a label. Uh, I know some people put a label here. I don't, for a couple of reasons. First of all, I find that when the label opens, it tends to rub against this area. And if you've got a label here, you're going to get very fine, powdery pieces of paper that are going to work their way into the disc and eventually work their way into the recorder itself. I find that's not, uh, I think that's not a good thing. Um, other people have put labels here with no problem, so it's up to you what you decide. The other reason I like to leave this blank is I actually use it as a design element. Like I said, I'm going to cover the whole disc with a label. I'm leaving this piece. Uh, the gold of the disc should match up pretty nicely with the gold of this. So I'm using it as a design element too. 
Okay, so anyway, and uh, besides this, okay, so you got these things. Besides that, of course, you need your Windows PC over here, and then uh, we'll get going with that uh, in a moment. Okay, so here we go, uh, the computer's up. Now, uh, what I should tell you is that I'm using CorelDRAW for this. Uh, the the tutorial is really independent of software. I mean, it doesn't matter what software you use. I use CorelDRAW. Uh, you could use other software. Whatever software you use has to support labels. Uh, uh, sorry, layers. Um, so anyway, if you're using a different software, your screen will look different from mine, but uh, the principles are the same. So anyway, you get the template here. I've got the template open, as you can see. Uh, I mean, it is now if I zoom in there, you can see that this is the MD label. This is a, a layout of what the MD looks like. Okay. Uh, what you need to do is you import uh, a copy of the album art. So I've got it imported here already. Uh, the best place to best thing to do is get it from Google. Some people scan the actual CD cover, but I've found that uh, if I search on Google, I can get a really high resolution copy of this. I think this is 600 by 600 pixels. That's the biggest I could find. Or maybe this is 800. So let's see properties here. See. Anyway, it was it was the biggest one I could find. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, 1024. Okay, so it's quite big. So you get the the highest resolution copy you can find. Makes it nice. And then, of course, you just import it into the template here. Drop it in. Okay. Now, of course, because we've got we're dealing with labels, you uh, layers again. Sorry, I can't speak this morning. Um, so you want to grab this layer here. Okay, it's that group. So maybe I'm going to rename that group. Well, use the very standard name, group 01. Okay, so I know where that la layer is. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to, I want that to be behind the layer. Okay, so we're going to get uh, we're going to move that so that's behind the layer. All right, and put it in that layer, and then group 01, and then we're going to move that down behind. The mini disc. Okay, so then it's in here now, and I'll zoom out a little bit to show you. Okay, can I move it around here, and you can see it's behind. You can see those uh, these these lines here. This is the line of the template. So you've got it. The template. You've got the uh, album art behind the template. Okay, so what I'll do now is you want to shrink that so that it fits to the MD. So we're going to shrink it down. Oh, it's shrinking nicely actually. Okay, so we're going to get uh, it right about there to match the size. Okay, oh, that works out as better than I thought it would for the measurements. Okay, great. All right, so all right, so there it is, and as you can see now, um, the album art is here. The mini disc, the outline of it is around here. You've got your shutter here. Okay, so this part here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna have. Okay, as I say, if you decided to use that, you could too. But uh, I'm not gonna use that part. But anyway, now you've got this. Okay, and that's in. Okay, so I've grouped it here. Now what I'll do is I zoom out. I'm gonna get rid of some of these other groups because I don't need them. Okay, get rid of them. That grab that group there. Get rid of that one. Okay. And then what I'll do is, uh, you also need to make your spine label. Well, maybe I'll make that now. So what I'm going to do is, I want to make a spine label for this as well. So I'm going to grab a color, maybe one of the darker colors would work better. So you want to get something, I don't know, maybe a lighter color, but eh. I tend to prefer the darker colors for the spine labels because uh, you don't have much to work with in terms of size so you need to make sure that it's going to work out okay okay and then flip it over here okay and then you've got the spine labels down in this part of the there so and then we grab one of the spines and we're going to do this drop the color in oops oh, that didn't work here ah yes the fill sorry here just a second change that back okay uh, use the foreground color. Okay, there we go. And then we drop it in. Okay. Now make a few spine. I not like that, obviously. There we go. 
not used to doing this on the camera. Okay, so what I usually do is make a few spines. Uh, actually, I'm going to make a few labels in case I need more and that it becomes an issue later. Now, just for the spine label, of course, you want to get uh, just text. So around six point, I think I use Arial six point around. Yeah, that should work. Maybe bold it. Okay, so, and then I'll type Archangels. Angels. Uh, 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 that's not going to work. I need to change the color. Here. Okay, so change the color. Yeah, it's, it's got a contrast with it. Okay, so I've got Archangels here. Okay, there we go. Archangels, and move that up here. La -la. Okay, there. All right, so the, you got that. That's going to be the spine cover. And then you'll just copy these down and down and down. And then what you'll do is, uh, what I recommend, highly recommend you do, is I've got, okay, now I've got this. This is the MD with the uh, cover art here. What you want to do is you want to make a few copies. Try to make at least four uh, copies because you're gonna, you might need them later. You might need spares, and you don't want to keep printing out more and more and more. So because you've got a whole A4 sheet, you can put a few a few on the sheet. So that's what I'm going to do first. Okay, now while I'm doing this, I just want to sh point out one thing. Uh, because I'm not using this area here, sometimes I don't bother erasing it, uh, and I just cut it out after I print it. But because the colors are so dark here, uh, it might get hard for me to see these guidelines. So I'm going to erase this area here that I'm not going to be cutting out and that should help me to uh, with the process later when I'm cutting it out. So that's what I'm going to do now before I make the copies. Okay, so here you see I've, I've erased the area here that I'm not going to be using. Uh, and now I'm ready to make my copies. So I've got this all together. I've combined it into a group. Uh, I guess you can delete that part there. Okay, now, so I just copy here, I'm going to make a few of them, okay, and that just, uh, again, it is not really necessary, but if you uh, end up uh, needing another copy, then you just don't have to print more, that's all. So I figure, print a few, right? So we're going to get that done, and then the spine label, the same thing, I just print a few. You shouldn't need more than one spine label, they're not that hard to make, but just in case, right, print a few of them. Okay. Now, yeah, so we're about ready to print. So now I'll get my uh, inkjet printer set up. Okay, so I printed, I've gone ahead and printed this now from the uh, inkjet, and you can see uh, um, the labels here. Now, what I did was I, I decided to block this out in CorelDRAW. You can do that in, well, Photoshop or anything you, you're using. Basically, because that it seemed like uh, my guidelines here, compared with the uh, colors, were going to be hard to see. So I just decided, well, I'm not going to use that anyway. If you're using that, you'd want to leave that in. But then what I did was, I, of course, I, I'm, I took a copy of this area here. These are for the shutter, right? So I just want a few extra. The only reason I do extra is because a lot of times I screw it up when I'm actually making the label, so I want extras. If you're good enough, you don't need more than one. Right? Or you could print like six or eight discs right, at one time. But for me, I like to have extra just when I'm doing my project. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going get to get this thing ready to cut. Now, what I do is the backing, of course, since this is a sticker, what you want to do, rather than, because what you have to do here is you're going to have to peel it. You're going to have to peel this, uh, you know, you're going to have to separate that with your thumb, right, to get that out. Um, now this is uh, this is a bit of a problem because uh, if you if you start having to do it here on your label, then what you're going to do is you're going to create a weak spot on your label, and that could start peeling off the disc over time. So you don't want to do that. So what you want to do is you're going to separate you're going to separate the label paper from the uh, backing on the corner of the page. Uh, I don't know if I can do it here or not. I'm trying to balance the camera at the same time, but the idea here is, okay, this part is not going to be used anyway, so you don't have to worry about doing damage to it. Okay, so we peel that, 
Now I can see behind the disc here. Okay, so I know that the disc is here. That's the, the label that would go under it. So what I'm going to do now is I'll take the scissors that I use and I'm going to cut cut into the backing, not the label, cut into the backing and then cut in just enough that you're going to be inside where the label goes. Okay, And you very carefully stick the label back on. So what happens is that's going to make it easier to peel the label off later when you're ready to do it. Okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that for each of these, okay, but uh, I'll shut the camera off and do that. And also the spine labels, I'll just make one right across here, and then for each of these, I'm going to make just my incision labels on the uh, backing, not the label itself, so that it's easy to take off. And I'll just do that now. Okay, so now I've got, uh, I've put in, I've put, I've cut various places in here. Well, you, I guess you can't really see it on the camera, but I've cut behind here is each one has a, a, a cut. So here would be, in, you know, somewhere in there, here would be somewhere in there, here would be somewhere in there like that. So each of them are going to be easy to peel off later. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is, uh, now what I, what I would do is I'm going to cut around each one of these labels. So I'm not actually going to cut them out. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut I'm going to leave a I'm going to leave a border around each one. So I'm just going to cut cut them out roughly, okay? And again, if you're good enough, you only have to do one, but I'm going to do all of them uh just in case I screw up the next step, okay? So these ones I'm going to cut and because this is going to not have the uh, shutter, of course I'm going to cut the shutter. I no, I'm not going to do that yet. Just cut out around, okay? Around each one. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay, so now I've got, uh, oh, here, they're over here now, sorry. Uh, i got one of each. So right now, looking at the uh, disc label here, the shutter label and the spine label. All right, so what I need to do now is, this is the part that gets complicated. Uh, what I do, I start, but I want to affix this to the table so it's not going to move. So I just take a couple of pieces of tape, I stick this to the table now. You may find other ways of doing this, I don't know, but I just want it to not move as I'm doing it, okay? So I put it here. That's why I leave some a buffer here, so I'm not putting the tape on the uh, label itself. Now I use this packing tape, which I showed you earlier, which is the the width of a mini disc, okay? Width of mini disc and then some. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to roll the mini the, 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 the tape across this label, okay? So you want to completely cover the label with the tape. Now I do that for a number of reasons. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, first of all, if you're doing it on an inkjet and you were to touch this with any amount of moisture on your hand, you're going to smear the label, okay? And I don't want it, I don't want my labels to be so delicate that I have to worry about that, okay? This tape is going to prevent that from happening, okay? The other thing is that uh, if I just stick the label like this on the disc now, uh, over time it's going to fade. You're talking about maybe five years later, something like that. You're going to notice this is going to fade, and it's not going to look as nice, okay? So I've got some labels that are 15 years old, 20 years old even, one of them. And I can tell you, I've got a 20-year-old label, and it looks... The, look, it looks as good as the day I made it because I covered it with tape. And I've got some labels that are 10 plus years old that look like crap because those ones I didn't put tape on. Okay, So this tape is really the key to making it look nice. But what you need to do is you need to get it across the face of this with no air bubbles. And that's the hard part. Okay, So what I've done is I've attached it to the table here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it, and I'm going to try and stick it on using my hand, right? And get it right across. And that's why I say, that's why I usually print a bunch of extras, because I screw this step up all the time. So hopefully it's going to go well here. Okay, so now we're ready with the tape. We take it out, okay? And we're going to just put it right across. And you want to make sure it covers the top and the bottom nicely. And we're going to go all the way across it 
like that with your finger. Okay, and we're going to get all that. Okay, air bubbles on the uh, outside of the disc don't matter, but where you've got color, you want it to be perfect. Okay, so let's try and smooth everything out. There we go. Okay, that's right. Okay, so you got the disc covered with tape. Now, that gives it a nice seal, and you're never going to have to worry about it fading. You're never going to have to worry about the color running. Okay? Now, the next step is you pull it off of the table very carefully, and I want to get all of this off of the table. So, again, the tape that's underneath here that's holding it on, that has to come off too. So you're going to pull all of this you're going to pull all of this off of the table very carefully, okay? Because you don't want to damage the label or anything else that's under it. All right? And then when you get it all off of the table, you're ready to start doing the cutting out. As you see, I've got my label now. It's cut, it's cut, I've got it off the table, okay? And in the back, you can see everything's there. So now what I'm going to do, take my super sharp scissors that I told you before I bought it a at an art store. I'm going to cut, very carefully cut out this disc. <coughs> now, um, some people prefer to use a razor blade for this, a blade, and if you're good with a blade, that's great. You can probably do a fairly accurate cut. I've just found I'm better with scissors, so that's why I've got these nice sharp scissors. Now, I should remind you, because I want to, to do the uh, the shutter, of course, I'm, I'm going to cut the shutter out here. I should have actually blanked that out as well with white, but I didn't. Anyway, I'm going to follow the line from the template and I'm going to cut out the shutter. So I'll, I'll cut that out now. Okay, so here's the uh, finished product that I've cut out. Okay, and as you can see, now that's going, oh, if I can get the thing to focus, that is, yeah, there. So that's the, the label now that I'm about to stick on. And then, uh, of course, back here is where I cut can see. See? I, I did that cut in the back, so it's going to be easy to get off. Now before I do this, I'm going to do exactly the same procedure for the uh, shutter piece and for the spine piece, but I won't show you that process since you already understand what it is. Basically just affix it to the table, you know, run that tape over it, and then I'm going to cut it out. Okay? And the same thing for the spine label. I do it all. I do all of them the same way with the tape, and it's for the same reason, because I don't want the colors to run. Uh, I should mention, somebody asked me before, why not use color laser? I can tell you from experience, you use color laser to do these, uh, about 10 years later, the colors run. And I don't know why, because the color lasers are supposed to be better, but I can tell you, with certainty it happens. I've had several discs with that. I did a color laser label, it looks great, and I even covered it with tape, and the colors ran after, like I say, it's more than five years later, but, you know, ten years later or so, you get these blurry, awful looking labels. So it's much better to use inkjet and cover it with this tape. Okay, so anyway, I'll do that first. Okay, so now it's time to stick on the labels. So I've got, I've got all the labels I need here. That's the little one. So I got the main label for the disc here, and the uh, shutter label, and the spine label, all right? So, it's a simple matter of sticking them on, and you just got to be very accurate when you're sticking these things on. So what you want to do first, of course, is just peel off this, uh, the backing, okay? Try to do the focus there. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, let's take, uh, take off the backing. It's just hard to do this with the camera in, in the way. Okay, and then you stick it onto the disc. And you want to match up that area there where the uh, shutter opens. That's the important part. So, you get that because you're going to have the mechanism in the way there. So, you got to make sure that's perfect. Okay. So again, we're going to do all the way around here, stick the disc on, like that, okay, and there we go. Okay, so as you can see, we got the label there. 
Now, you want to be able to push it along the sides, have it really nice. Okay. Okay, and then you do the same thing for the uh, the shutter and the spine. Okay. Okay, so you can see now what I've done is I've put the disc label, I put the shutter label, and uh, on the side here the spine label. Okay, there we go. And then uh, what I'm going to do now is, uh, uh, and, and you, as you can see, what I was trying to do here is trying to match the gold color of these wings up with the gold color of the disc that you can see visible. So I thought that would be kind of a neat thing to do. Now, what I, what the reason I need this blade is because when I do the label, there's always a little bit of a gap here. There's a little bit of label sticking up. I don't know if you can see it or not, just in the edge here. So what you can do is just run the blade across the, all the sides, make sure that I've cut off any excess, especially with the shutter here, because you don't want anything getting into the mechanism of the, the recorder. So I run it along here, all of the sides, just trim it really nicely and really finely. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, like that. You got to you got to be really careful with this because you want a nice clean edge. So I'm going to do that with the camera off. I'll be right back. Okay, so that's the finished product now. So I've I've done the edges here, made them really nice. Uh, as you can see, the uh, the label's going to match up nicely, and then. Uh, the way the shutter opens is quite nice. Sometimes what I do is I take the shutter right off the disc in order to uh, in order to make sure that it works properly. The thing opens and closes, so it's not going to open for me now. But anyway, yeah, so it slides down there nicely, comes back up okay, so everything's all right with the mechanism. you got to make sure you didn't leave get anything in there that's going to make it uh, stick. So with my method, of course, you got this little thing here. But as I say, I try to use that as a design element. And you, if your experience is that you can put a, a label there and have it not be affected by anything, that's great too. But anyway, I think these are nice looking discs. I mean, better than just a rectangular label here, I think. My opinion, anyway. And uh, and there you go. There you got your, your nice disc here. And, uh, and I think they look pretty cool. Kind of like the old LP covers, you know. So uh, anyway, hope I've inspired somebody or to do it. Actually, as I say before, you know these these aren't my ideas. I've just uh, learned from others over the years, and hopefully this is helpful to somebody else. And there you go. Well, the lighting's not all the the greatest in here, I guess. But I'll try and hold something. I'll block it. But you see, the CD and the MD. There, try and make. Try to be inspired by the uh, cover art. Anyway, so that's the that's the end.